In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about these, the New Balance Super Comp Elite version four, and we have the New York Marathon edition for 2024, which is great timing, because it's the new marathon this weekend, and New Balance are sponsoring this world major. There are likely to be quite a few sponsored or gifted videos coming up and reviews about these over the coming weeks. So I wanted to get a non-sponsored, non-gifted review in from a real consumer who purchased these with my own money beforehand. Now I've done about 65 miles in these so far, running at different paces and different distances, and I'm gonna share with you my thoughts, opinions, and telling you who I think these are perfect for. But before we do that, let's take a look at some B-roll of these in action from a run that I did around central London with my son. So the basics first, these are a full length carbon plated racing shoe that comes with a full length carbon plated racing shoe price. These come in at 250 British pounds here in the UK and I think also $250 in the US. I ordered a UK size 10, which is a US size 11, and it weighs in at 272 grams, which is quite heavy compared to some of the alternatives in the market, like the Vaporfly and the Metaspeed Asics, which both weigh in at around 200 grams in my UK size 10. In terms of fit, I would say they fit true to size, but if you're somebody that sits at the top end of your normal size, then it might be worth considering going half a size up, as when I got these, I thought that they were gonna be too small initially and too snug, but after wearing them, I found that the upper fit fits well around your foot and they ended up being much more comfortable than I expected. In terms of stack height, we've got 40 mil at the back, we've got 36 mil at the toe, so a four mil drop. We have the Phantom Fit Upper, which is breathable and very, very comfortable. It feels slightly scratchy to touch and isn't very elasticated or stretchy. I really like the design actually, and in some places it's kind of almost transparent and you can see through it and not in others. There are loads of different colorways that you can get in this, but I really, really like the New York edition. It has a very cool little design in the end here. You have to look closely, but you can see it's supposed to be lots of little people doing the, the, the race and the run and the marathon. It's not easy to see, but it's a great little detail that helps this colorway remain a little unique compared to the others. Moving up to the laces, I'm not a big fan of these to be fair. Uh, there isn't anything really wrong with them. I just way prefer the jagged design that you get on the likes of the Asics Metaspeed and the Nike Alpha Fly and Vaporfly. I've not had any issues with the laces on these, but of all my running shoes, I think that these are the thinnest and look like they're the most likely to come undone unexpectedly. That said, I do find them easy to get a very decent lockdown in these without too many adjustments. The tongue is non-gusseted and there's not really much more than a piece of material offering not much padding. There is a loop in the middle to keep the laces in place and so far I've found that the tongue has stayed in place when I've been running. If you like to get a really tight lockdown with these, then I think you might need to adjust them a few times to avoid feeling any sort of discomfort that you might on the top of your foot. Now the heel area is the area where if you're gonna have any issues with these, it will be here. The shape of the heel and particularly the ridge across the top is causing blistering and in some cases pretty bad bleeding and soreness. Thankfully, 
I personally haven't had this, but it seems to be a common thing that happens. So my advice is if you plan on considering getting these, then get yourself into a running store or the New Balance store and get on a treadmill and see how they feel. Because from what I hear, you'll be able to tell almost immediately if these are gonna have issues for you or not. As mentioned, I've not had any soreness or issues with the heel, so for me, there isn't a problem. The heel itself doesn't have much padding, but with a good lockdown, I didn't notice any heel slip at all. The midsole I have really enjoyed so far. New Balance fuel cell is now 100% Piva foam, which is the same as what they use in the Nike Zoom X and the Asics Metaspeed Edge FF Turbo Plus. The ride is super comfortable actually, with the foam offering a firm but not rigid ride. They are not as soft as the Alpha Fly 3 if you've worn them, but they are softer than the much firmer Asics Metaspeed Paris. The full length carbon plate sits on top of a rocker, which helps transition from heel to toe. The carbon plate doesn't feel anywhere near as aggressive as some of the other racing super shoes out there. The ride feels much more like a cruiser than a shoe that will help you get your PB. I personally couldn't feel the carbon plate in these at all when I was wearing them. They're great for getting you and keeping you at cruising speed for long periods of time, and it feels very easy to get into a nice consistent rhythm in these. I really like the aesthetics of the midsole as well with the different lines and shapes, but I guess that's totally personal preference in this case. As previously mentioned, the Super Comp Elite V4 is heavier than many of the other Super Shoe options out there and are 272 grams in my UK size 10. They don't actually feel that heavy on though, and the midsole does a great job in keeping your legs feeling fresh, but I imagine those 70-ish extra grams per shoe compared to the likes of the Metaspeed and the Vaporfly would be noticeable as you head over half marathon and to, into marathon distance. I would say that considering these are 40 mil stack, they are actually very stable and look after your ankles well over any distance. They corner well, and because they're less aggressive than the other super shoe options out there, they may be a better racing shoe option for heavier runners that want a good balance between firm comfort and looking after their legs with mild but not too prominent propulsive feel. Now the outsole on these is amongst the best in class in my opinion, with almost the entire outsole covered with this well positioned rubber that offers excellent traction in both dry and wet conditions. I would say that the grip on these are so good that these would be the one of the very best option carbon plated super shoes that you can get for winter races and higher end long distance training. The outsole for me isn't showing virtually any signs of wear after 100k of running so far. Because the entire heel area is covered with this well positioned rubber grip pads, this would be a good option for runners who tend to heel strike compared to other options out there. I personally am prone to heel striking when I get fatigued and into long distance runs and mostly on my non-dominant leg and that shows on my other carbon plated racing shoes that I've had over the years but there is absolutely no signs of that on these whatsoever after 100k. They've got a decent toe bumper with a decent grip which allows you to dig in when you want to push harder into the pace when you're in your runs. So overall, I've been pretty surprised by the Super Comp Elite version 4 and surprised in a good way. I nearly purchased these a few months before I actually did, but I held off because of the reported issues on the heel and some bad feedback about the weight and value for money. However, what I got is a very capable and comfortable super shoe, which does long distance cruising very, very well. They're not a good option for speedy 5K runs, for example, but they're perfect for long distance cruising at anything above a 10K. It's not the most aggressive, fast or lightest in its class, but somehow has its own charm and feel. Now, would I pick these for a race? Maybe actually, I think if I was gonna go for a PB, then I would definitely go for a Metaspeed or an Alpha Fly over these. But if I was running a half or a full marathon for enjoyment and not concerned about pace, then these would definitely be a solid option. Who would I recommend these for? I think these are a great option to consider if you're a maybe a 145 to two hour half marathon runner or a 330 to 430 marathon runner. The outsole of these makes it a great option for those prone to heel strike as I mentioned before and the midsole balance between firm comfort and moderate propulsion through the rocker and carbon plate makes these a great option for heavier runners as well. They won't give you a super aggressive ride like some of the other super shoes out there, but they will feel very, very comfortable and keep you feeling fresh and energized on long efforts. At 250 British pounds or $250, these are expensive, but there are deals around. And if you look, I think you can probably pick these up in places like sportsshoes.com for nearer 200 pounds or $200. Now, do you have these? And if so, what do you think of them? Have you had any issues with the hill that we've heard so much about? If so, let me know your thoughts and your comments in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video or found any value in it, then consider giving the video a thumbs up as it really does help with the algorithm. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.